hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel and in today's video i'll be talking about the interview experience of one of one of my student for the ey company and this was for a salesforce developer role and the total experience was three years okay so uh, we'll be talking about the technical questions and this was round one so first technical interview you can say uh, so first question was uh, from the admin side there are 10 users who have create read and edit permission on an object and uh, uh, later on they need to remove the create and edit permission for two of the users okay so what will be your approach to do something like this okay so this is a classical admin question where uh, sales, you have to go with what Salesforce suggests. Salesforce suggests us to go with the most restrictive permission as a base permission and then increase it for the users who need additional permission. So what we are going to do on profile, we are going to remove the create and edit permission and will assign that profile to all 10 users. Later on, we will create a permission set which will have create and edit permission for this object and will assign it to eight remaining users so that only these two users will only have the read permission on that object okay and make sure the uh, owd and other things are also in place okay uh, second question was a traditional queue and public group question what is the queue and what is public group why do we use queues why do we use public group so queue is for the ownership whereas public is group is to extend the visibility both of these can contain the you know list of people and users but one is for the ownership purpose the other one is for the visibility purpose so make sure you explain that third question was related to the best practices of triggers test classes and lwc component so see whenever you get best practices question take your time and try to explain it in the best possible manner because this is the chance given by interviewer to you to tell how good you are uh, you know in the things you do so make sure you take your time and explain all the possible things you do in your real life uh, real time projects as well uh, fourth question was what is test dot is test running why do we use it so test dot is test running is something to test a piece of code which you cannot test otherwise so you will put it in your normal apex classes and all the logic written inside that will be covered in your test classes but do not try to use it for uh, normal things as well like if you can reach to that code without using this try to use that okay then other question was related to what is test dot start test and test dot stop test why do you use it and couple of cross questions related to can we use it multiple times in a method so we cannot use it why do we use it because we get the fresh set of governor limits with these okay uh, then there was a question related to uh, there are 10 managed package and each of these managed package has a trigger on contact object and each of that trigger is using 10 circle queries okay so there are 100 circle queries on contact uh, normally through managed package and then you have written a custom trigger on it with in that custom trigger there are five circle queries so when some you will do something on contact whether you will hit the governor limit circle 101 or not okay so see managed package will get their own governor limit so answer will be no you will not hit the governor limit from the managed package related circle query you may hit it otherwise like if your code is not written well in your uh, trigger custom trigger but it will not happen through the managed package because they will get their own set of governor limits okay uh, then there was a question related to create a batch class with all three method and write a queueable apex or execute a queueable apex from that batch class so the intention of this question was to see the overall comfortableness of writing batch apex and knowing the logic of how to call a queueable apex from the batch apex uh, there can be multiple if and else question like uh, whether you should call it from execute or finish in this case there was not many but when you give uh, you may get this question you may get couple of cross questions as well so make sure you are aware about cross questions uh, calling batches from flow uh, from the uh, future method calling future method from queueable and all those sort of questions okay and yes you can call queueable apex from the batch apex so she was able to write then there was a question can we call future method from trigger so yes of course you can call a future method from trigger but do not just answer it trying to give examples as well uh, like like uh, let's say you have a user trigger uh, on your production and uh, 
on the update of let's say a field you have to update the opportunity owner or something so whatever you need to de do on opportunity need to be done on the future method because otherwise you will hit the mixed dml error so make sure you give an example as well because that will uh, with the help of example you will connect with the interviewer on a different uh, you know execution level not just the answer level so that is very important all right uh, then there was a question on how to call a screen flow from lightning web component so there is a comp there is a tag to do that and vice versa is also possible so make sure you practice that so calling a screen flow from lwc and calling lwc in a screen flow both are possible but make sure that uh, you practice it so that if they ask the tag name you are aware about that okay then what there was a question on classic sockle query how to fetch all the contacts which do not have any sorry how to fetch all the accounts which do not have any contacts okay so this is a circle query where you need to put uh, not in the where condition i hope you'll be able to write i'll also put it in the description so don't worry uh, next question was can we edit apex classes triggers and visual post pages directly in production so we cannot edit apex classes and triggers directly in production however we can edit the visual force page directly in production i mean that was two couple of years ago when i wrote my uh, vf page last vf page years ago okay and then there was a trigger scenario there's a checkbox field on account let's say uh, create task so whenever that checkbox field is true then you will have to create a task on the primary contact of that account okay so this was a trigger written scenario make sure you write it and if you have any doubt feel free to get in touch with me i'll be able to help you okay uh, then there was a question how to avoid trigger recursion without using a static boolean variable so this is a classic question i mean this is a very old question uh, we used to get around six seven years ago so see so a static boolean variable is the first answer which anybody gives so that is why interviewer is specifically told that without using a static boolean variable you can use static set or map and trigger frameworks there are multiple ways in fact there is a very good article uh, published by apex hours i'll put the link in the comment box so that you guys can check okay uh, how to get the current user id in lwc without using apex so you can directly import the uh, import the id or you can also get it via schema make sure you check it and uh, practice it in your own or this is an easy question so you should not skip or miss the answer of these question this is easy uh, then there was a question about how to pass data to grandparent component in lightning web component so there is a parent then child and then there is another child you will create a custom event on child and publish it bubble it up to the uh, grandparent and you will capture it on the grandparent and that is how you're going to get it you can also use lightning message services that is the next question explain the lightning message services how do you communicate between vf pages and lightning web component what tags will you use in the vf pages versus what tags you will use in the lightning web component what are the setup configurations you need to do in order to configure lightning message services so that is something you need to practice i have covered this in my notes so you can ask for my notes in my linkedin or i will be more than happy to give you so these were all the questions make sure um, you like the video if you find the content useful i am sharing my students experience to help you guys so let me know if it is helping you guys thank you